What does it mean to be human? What does it mean to look? Nakoshi and Ito are walking together in the park as winter sweeps away the remaining leaves. Close to finally remembering his past, Nakashi reveals to the friend that, in his entire life, he's never felt anything, nothing. Only once, he was. But back then already, when that stranger had looked at him, it was too late. Homunculus follows the journey of self-discovery of a man who has given up everything. His job, his car and apartment, his status, and more importantly, himself. After being contacted by Ito, a person claiming to be fascinated by humans, the man, in desperate need of money, undergoes a delicate and ambiguous surgery called trepanation to supposedly be able to feel again, even though every person who's opened a hole in their skull has later been reported to either have gone insane or died. Soon enough, Nakashi begins to see strange and otherworldly creatures when looking at roughly half the humans he meets when covering his right eye. Ito called such monsters homunculi, and they seem to prove his experiment successful, in that what he's achieved is the restoration of a lost human ability, perception. The human skull, until the age of 18 months, presents several holes that eventually close. Once this happens, man loses what could be called his sixth sense. In fact, if adults learn by thinking, kids discover the world by feeling. So what happens to a man with the intuition of a child? It's simple for a reality to turn into illusion. It is equally easy for illusion to turn into reality. With these words, Ito explains that a homunculus is the external manifestation of the subconscious, even if hidden deep inside it, past traumas resulting from old experiences, are always looking for an opportunity to come back to surface. And while it's only natural for the human mind to forget pain, the problem that comes with that is the loss of part, if not all of the self since the conscious is inevitably shaped around avoiding the unconscious from awakening as a defensive mechanism. Instead, by allowing the real self to show while conscious, the homunculus can be defeated, relieving the person from their conflicting duality. Nakashi quickly makes of defeating homunculi his objective, but it's no act of kindness, quite the opposite actually, as Every time he looks at a homunculus, the homunculus looks back at him, and interacting with one is occasion to learn more about his real I, lost somewhere in the depths of his mind. So, the man begins the search of his ego, but if homunculus initially starts as a redemption story of a man wanting to repair himself and others, it slowly takes a darker turn when Nakashi, desperate to remember and feel his real self, loses his sanity. Parked in the middle of two worlds, the city and its park, where tens of homeless people stay, Nakashi is unable to leave the border and join one side or the other, spending most of his days near his car, the last thing of his possession. And things are what separate the people full of emptiness from there to the real ones here, left with nothing but themselves. It's funny. The more buildings rise in the city, the less humans seem to remain, and soon, not even the park will be spared. When overwhelmed by the suffocating skyscrapers of Tokyo, the traffic and city lights, all the lies coming from those empty people, Nakashi seeks refuge at sea. There is something there that calms his senses, or maybe there isn't. He's all by himself, far away from the monsters lurking in the streets though he's no different from them, he's come to realize. After all, Nakashi used to be part of that world, wearing a mask just to be accepted by society, only that he eventually forgot who the real him was, his face. That's why the sea is so comforting. The waves won't allow his appearance to be reflected, rather, they remind him what colors, smells, sounds, taste and temperature feel like sensations Tokyo has erased from him. While initially terrified of seeing the real world, 
the one inhabited by homunculi, the naked manifestation of evil. Nakashi gradually starts depending on that view, not to drown him back into the fake world he used to live in, the one where lies and symbols like money, brands and cars rule over people. Nakashi had climbed his way to the top while crushing everyone under him thanks to those, bringing countless women to bed in the hotel opposite the park. From one of its windows, he used to look down on it, but, in a way, he was only watching his future. Nakashi is the reason why those stands exist. He ruined those people's lives, all while selling himself out and drowning in a sea of appearance that in return gave him nothing of what he truly wished for. To be looked at, even when surrounded by women and rich friends, all they would see was his money, and eventually, curling into a fetal position to sleep and tasting his own semen became the only ways to feel his true self. Very often while driving, Nakashi makes up songs on the fly, but the one who's actually singing is his subconscious, complaining about the faceless ghost he has turned into. In this society, everybody wears a mask, both to fit in and develop relationships that wouldn't otherwise be possible if one stayed themselves, both to hide and protect behind another layer the inner world. But unlike all the rest of the faceless ghosts in the city, Nakashi's unconscious and conscious are slowly merging together, which shows on his own body when parts of people's homunculi he interacts with attach onto him. The truth is that nothing has changed. Back in the countryside, Nakashi used to walk staring down at his feet, feeling nothing and missing out on everything the world had to offer, because nobody would ever acknowledge his existence by looking at him. So when he cut himself off the world, the ground eventually became the only thing he could feel, the most basic attachment to life, gravity, as a body weighing on the asphalt of the street. All that was left for him was to blame it on his ugly face, the one even his father had insulted. Cuter but emptier people were deemed superior by society just because of their good looks. Still, when he ran off to Tokyo and underwent plastic surgery, changing his face, he kept on feeling nothing, while gaining everything. At that point, going back was only partially possible since stripping himself of his luxury car or high position was surely doable, but he had irremediably lost his visage and forgotten his real self among all the lies, money, women and symbols, having become yet another faceless ghost. Those people are him and he is them. It's in an old pair of shoes, still smelling, unlike the ones he wears in the present, lacking any feel, life to them, that Nakashi finds the last remaining photo of his old and ugly face, having burnt the rest to leave behind that part of himself. Although, when he looks at the person portrayed in the photograph, he doubts that is even him. The entire foundation of Nakashi's search for the eye is compromised when Ito puts a bag in his patient's ear. Homunculi are only illusions and projections of his mind, stimulated by believing something as irrelevant as the 3mm hole in his skull to be capable of giving him a sort of third eye. Everything has only been a placebo effect experiment. Basically, Akashi only sees those creatures because he believes he can, and, interestingly, they've all held a piece of him as his own reflection, as if he saw exactly what his mind wanted to see. Even the guppy swimming in Ito's homunculus, a mass of water whose face resembles the father, is proof of that. Nakashi has only been reflecting himself in other people. He's the same as Ito, both stuck between two worlds, with neither knowing their real self. If the gap is Ito's true person, the father locked it away. But the two are also the opposite. While Nakashi underwent cosmetic surgery and got a new face, in the process of losing his former self, Ito is instead living in a body that is not her own and surgery is what would complete her. So, as a medical student, learning more about humans in general and 
Their mind, in particular, was an unconscious choice to understand her real nature. While Ito may have finally found herself, also thanks to Nakoshi's pseudo-ability, the man, on the other hand, cannot go back to who he once was. True that he threw away everything, but the new and fake face has stayed. Besides, he cannot even remember his old one. Is that photo truly him, or another person? Deceived himself with all sorts of things, he has been living a lie as a lie himself. Keeping in mind what he's just learned, Nakashi begins questioning if even the hole in his forehead is real or yet another lie, when suddenly he cannot see Homunculi anymore, and fearing to be brought back to the fake world, a living nightmare now. Nakashi is forced to drill another one on his own to regain his power. Slowly, he's starting to resemble the people in those reports. The more leaves abandon the trees, the more homeless are forced to leave the park by the authorities. Soon, Nakashi won't have a place to stay. The hotel has kicked him out because of his smell, and it is no longer possible to park the car on the border of the two worlds. Both the fake and real dimensions are disappearing, together with the limbo between them. It's at this point that Nakashi's descent into madness accelerates even further. There is only one place left for him to run to, and it's the woman who pops in and out of his dreams, the royal road to the unconscious, the one who'd drawn him as a cloud and had given a shape to his existence. Same person who'd gifted him those shoes to walk forward again and raise his head to look at the world around him. The park in summer has overgrown trees like a labyrinth, but when naked in winter, the clearer view allows to feel the real width of the park. It's only possible in this season to know where one is exactly, and Nakashi finally understands something crucial. Before Tokyo, when he used to be true to himself, even then, nothing ever happened. While he was an invisible human nobody would look at, neither did he ever look at anyone. Nakashi has been begging people to acknowledge his existence when he's never done so for anyone, and once he joined the world over there, all he did was play with lives and ruin them. The more lies he would shield himself with while hurting others, the more things he would buy to buy women and looks, the more he eventually strayed away from being a human, and he irreparably stopped being one when he gave up Nanako. She was uglier than any woman he'd seen, and yet he lost his virginity to her in front of the sea. The only person who'd looked at his ugly face and loved it. She was the one who'd given him the strength to raise his head one more time. But when Nakashi finally began looking forward again thanks to Nanako, his gaze was met by the gorgeous lies, while below him was an ugly woman staring at him. Nakashi got his face down over and threw himself in the fake world. Along with himself, he threw away Nanako and their child, not wanting to see another him be born with that ugly face. And in the end, what did he get? Every day he looked for an escape, no different than helplessly staring at the clouds in search for a way out. He was nothing in the past, and when he gained something special, he abandoned it. Nakashi has been looking down on everybody the entire time, tempted by the beautiful lies, and stopping at the outside of people, looking at things at face value. Nanako's eyes were on nothing but him, on Satoshi, his previous name, but he forsook even that. And on the day he left Nanako, she too decided to throw away her ugly face with that ugly boy. The truth is that both Satoshi and Nanako are now the same. She became Nanami, forgetting everything but that boy, and eventually got stuck in the middle of two worlds. It's only when they kiss each other that they briefly find their old selves again. This gives Nakashi the hope that, together, they could look at each other for who they are, 
spot. The man's frightening request is not welcomed by Nanako, who's scared and unwilling to pretend that she sees depth in that lie of a man. When Nakashi forces the trepanation on Nanako, and has sex with her, he finally finds what he's been looking for. While the woman sees her new and fake face on Nakashi's, the man sees his new one on hers. If homunculi were the true and genuine manifestation of the subconscious, then the two should have seen their old appearances reflected on the face of the other, and yet, they don't. But while Nanako is self-aware enough to disclaim that face as hers, Nakashi, Desperate and insane, accepts his new face, a lie, as his reality and truth, forcing this view on Nanako. Basically, by seeing his new visage as his supposedly real form now, Nakashi has developed a coping mechanism to deceive himself that he's not fake, when in truth, he is more than anyone. And since nobody's ever going to look at him, all Nakashi has been left with is himself, the new and fake one. In town, everybody has his face now and greets him. He is in heaven. Or is it hell? The homunculi are me. Not monsters. Not reality. Just truth. While the homunculi are never completely confirmed as mere hallucinations or real creatures, because, after all, Nakashi does see them and is able to affect people, they are ultimately proof that, as he sees, he wants to be seen too, because we only exist when reflected in someone else's eyes. The focus should more properly be shifted on the core of Nakashi's problem, that he doesn't simply lie to others, he especially does so to himself. That initially he was only able to see half the people as homunculi was but a way not to question his person. But the moment he grew a robotic arm, representing an armor of lies, and a leg of symbols, etc., he began to understand, but not accept, he had been lying to himself after all. And he kept doing so, until the very end, despite Tito constantly telling him to doubt himself and look inside of his heart first, and then the others. As Nakashi looked at people, he kept on asking them to look back at him, when looking isn't something one should expect compensation for. To be real, shouldn't have limitations or conditions, and instead of judging and bettering himself, Nakoshi forced a growth in his test subjects, even when those people may not have been ready to change, something he didn't do, preferring to first close himself off the world and then open his eyes, but see reality as he wanted to. One year later, Ito finally finds Nakoshi in front of the sea, with his modest car, even more holes in his coal, and perhaps the hope that she has come to look at him. He's been living immersed in the world of the homunculi and is tired of looking. As he tries to make Ito pay for being the original cause of everything, some people come to look at him for Nanako's murder. Akashi is finally happy. Homunculus follows the descent into madness of a narcissistic and schizophrenic man who jumped from a world full of nothingness into one full of things, though empty. After realizing so, he panicked trying to find someone who would treat him as he had never treated anyone. While some things are better left hidden and forgotten in the depths of our mind, it's still better to not reach a certain low point in life when we're still in full control of it, especially when we can influence other people's lives too. All Nakashi wanted was to be looked at and have his existence confirmed, to be circumscribed from his surroundings into a certain shape, just as Nanako had done with that cloud. But while Nakashi closed himself in his blind need to see and be seen in return, Ito bloomed, and that's what it means to be human. It is not enough to look, it's necessary to listen to the other and allow them to transform our life, 
which is represented by Nakoshi seeing Ito with her true face at the end, as someone who's been successful at welcoming the other and their own self, which is only possible by remembering what a homeless man once told Nakoshi. It's always too early to cut oneself off the world, to not see or be seen, to feel nothing. It's always too early. Lastly, I also want to point out the meaning behind the symbol of the manga, which looks both like a guppy and a chameleon. While the former symbolizes being true, the other has the well-known ability to camouflage and be fake. It's the duality of man, and while lies are not always bad things, it's up to us to make one side way more than the other.